Okay, good evening. I'd like to call to order the Golf Committee meeting of Tuesday, May the 9th, 2023. Read a statement that in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30, Section 20, regarding public taping, I must inquire if anyone is publicly taping. Seeing none, we can move on. I'd like to tell the audience that uh, this meeting is being filmed uh, and that the meeting is being recorded and will air on Channel 18 after the meeting concludes. We'll take the roll call. Jason Orby. Present. Mark Bushway. Present. Suzanne Connolly. Jeff Converse. John Cookson. Present. Keith Hockstein. Present. Bill Silver. Present. Jesse, do we have any public comments? We do not. We do not. Okay, we will move on to acting on the minutes of the April 11, 2023 meeting. Does anyone have any additions, deletions, or suggestions to that, to those minutes? Seeing none, do we have a motion to accept? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Director of Golf Maintenance Report. May we switch the order? Of course. All right. Director of Golf Report. All right, so we'll start with the, uh, the elephant in the room, the clubhouse update. Um, there is some exciting news. The food truck is on site. Oh, we got there today. Wow. Uh, it's pretty substantial. It's down, located uh, right in front of the, where the, what we'll call the old pro shop door is. Um, picked that spot for a number of reasons, just it was the biggest open space we had, easy to run electric to it, out of the way uh, of, you know, the people washing down carts, that kind of thing. Um, once the town completes the inspection, which had to be on site before the inspection, we can, we're going to have our electrician run electricity to it. Uh, Gimme's, at that point, Gimme's will have the green light to provide whatever it is they're planning on. Um, I haven't seen any kind of sample menu, but... I'm sure it will be limited, however, it's something. Um, outside of that, honestly, not much to report. To say things are moving slowly is an understatement. Um, Question. Wicca. The Wicca license. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. It'll be, um, I'm not sure if it will be limited to just what's in a can. That's what she was talking about that. Might not be cocktails. It might be just anything canned. <clears throat> Uh, for some reason, she said something about like pouring pouring out of a bottle is a different type of. Uh, I'm not sure how it exactly works, but she basically made it sound like it might just be canned things. Uh, so, but I mean, it's safe to say, I mean, you know, all kinds of beers, and, yeah. But are they able to use that deck to for people to sit? I know we talked about that last month. Have not gotten a definitive answer on that, but we talked about it this morning. She and I, she being uh, Brenda, me and the new um, manager uh, for this. And I'm going to fight hard for that to be kind of the, the go-to spot. Because frankly, as we talked last time, there's, just, there's not many other places. Right. Even the places that would make sense, they're not level. Yeah. Um, so I think that makes the most sense. To just set up a few tables up there. We're talking four or five, enough for 20 people. Mm -hmm. and, you know, enough... You know, um, I, I'm going to lobby for that. But it's safe. It, it's safe. It, correct. Yeah. And it's not, there's not going to be service up there. It'll be a very, you know, it'll be a crude kind of Carry self Carry It's a place to sit on yeah. Correct. But at least there'll be tables and chairs right. and then, the, you know, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was talked about today and I think uh, it makes sense. I don't see any real pushback. Um, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> so the well, town has no problem with us. Um, having people sit there and eat uh, after, or eat I'm and not going to be drink. on the record saying that. All right. I don't anticipate an issue. Okay. That's, the, that's as confidently as I can say it. Um, Did the architect have anything to say about the deck? No. At all? Nothing? No. Nope. Okay. I mean, structurally, no issues. Okay. So I, I don't, I, I can't imagine why there would be an issue. All construction, all abatement, everything that's going to happen, all demo is going to happen, you know, from 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 the interior walls towards the parking lot. There's, there's nothing's going to affect the deck, so I don't, I don't see an issue. Um, will they have enough staff to, to, you know, have a server up there? I doubt it. But at least it'll be a place to 
you know, a place to sit down after. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, place it's important. Have a, it's important too. Have a beverage. Um, yep. Um, at this point, I'm I, based on a conversation I had with Chris Canella this morning. I'm kind of resigned to the thinking that we're looking at least into the spring of '24. Uh, I was hoping the end of this calendar year, but that's it's not going to happen. For what? Spring of '24. For the clubhouse to be to be completed, correct. Okay. For us to be back in there. Um, uh, well, will, will that affect the choice of which course gets closed in the winter? That's a great. It's a great question. Um, it will. <laughs> um, it will. Sure, it'll be a huge factor. Um, I mean, for a lot of reasons that I'm sure you all know. You know. It makes sense to close this place over the winter. You're protecting it. Hyannis is a better winter golf course. It drains better. It's more tree lined. It's warmer for that reason. It, you know, um, and we want to protect the place that makes substantially more money. I, you know, I'll, I'll just say it. Um, but he and I will have to talk about that. I'm sure he'll push back on that. But you know, if we have to, if we have to, we have to, have to. sure. Um, Hey, Hyannis could use a break. It's it's never it's you know it's getting played on year round. Well, years ago they they would alternate it. Years ago, many years ago, they alternated which one they closed. Right. So um, Hyannis has been kept open for at least the last five seven years. Sure, at least. Yeah. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. No. Um, no. You'd you'd notice it come spring for sure. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, you'd notice it, uh, especially on the par three tee boxes and the, you know. But um, we'll see. Um, maybe a miracle happens and it's a moot point and we're, you, we're good, but I doubt it. J Jesse, any movement on, do you have to go to bid for the rebuild? I don't think so. The insurance company will, oh, for, for the rebuild, yes. Oh, absolutely. But for the demo, the insurance company will want quotes. Right. But because it's still, I'm hoping under the emergency, guys, um, we won't have to go out to bid. The for, the demo, will, for the demo. For the re reconstruction, absolutely. Because then we're out of the emergency phase. Um, we'll definitely have to go out to bid for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and a lot of different things are being looked at, not just putting it back the way it was. Uh, mechanical systems, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, ADA code compliance, fire suppression. You know, there's no sprinklers in that building. Uh, a lot of the bottom level is not to code. Um, things like that are being looked at. All the types of things that come into play because we're technically we're making renovations to what is a 50 plus year old building. Um, and if you're wondering why we don't just tear it down and start from scratch, I'm right there with you. Um, I'm wondering the same thing, but I don't get to make those decisions. Um, again, don't have anything great on that front. I'm going to move on unless there's any. You know, I'm. I'm it's frustrating. We had an asbestos issue between. Yeah. Uh, between us and the insurance company, was that settled? Yes, we did the testing. And spent the money, did the testing, found what we knew was there, um, and that's being factored into the plans for demo. Yeah. Okay. So it was. Do we test or do we just assume? Uh, a stop positive is what the term was used, which was, if there's asbestos here, there's no need to test here. You just assume it's there also. Um, the insurance company didn't like that. They said, no, we still want you to test. So we did. Spent about another $4,000, got the testing back, and sure enough, it wasn't necessary. We, it, was, it was where we knew it was. Um, but that was a few, that was, God, six weeks ago. We're on day 94. Um, so, uh, hopefully very soon we have plans to be able to get, get people in there. And because and, right now, the only things that have really been done, the flooring in the function room is ripped up and all the ceiling tiles on the bottom floor are taken down. That's all that's happened. Has Kimmy's uh, given us an indication that they want to remain there? I would assume so. Have they? No. We no. haven't had that conversation yet. No. Uh, every conversation has been about the immediate, you know. Um, the, the lease is That's up. one more year. Uh, a little less. It releases up the end of right. March. Right. Um, if I believe if we are not to offer an extension, we have to provide them 90 days notice. That gets us to the end of this calendar year. 
Uh, we that hasn't been decided. Um, you know, we'll see how the rest of this year goes. But a decision will need to be made by the end of this calendar year on our end as to whether or not we will be um, going for an extension. Going for an extension. Aren't we just going to open it up again once their lease runs we, out? We have, the, we, have, we have an option to extend. We have an option to out. extend them. Correct. Or we could open it up and yes. say, who is interested in Correct. taking on this franchise? One or the other. Here, six years ago, when, when the lease was signed here for Fairway, Fairway on the Green, Bill Hensley, it was a three years right. with three town year options. The town executed all three of those. But then this past year, that was it. So we had to go back out. Right. And, you know, right? Because there were no more options years left. Right. It just so happened, he ended up staying. But uh, we have the same arrangement with Gimme's where we have town option years. It's our option, not theirs. We can offer it to them or we go out to bid. Those are the only two things that happen. Um, but if you offer it, he can decline. Sure, of course. We're not, yeah, he's not locked in. If, right, right. Well, we, 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 would, had, we, would, we would go to bid. Whether it's him or anybody else. I mean, that's what the bid process is designed right. for, is to see what's out right. there and, you know, they see what be, else is out there. There's nothing stopping him from putting in a bid. Right. Them. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. Um, we'll see. Uh, this year is going to be big for, you know, what they can provide. Uh, I'm talking to Brenda this morning. I stressed I don't want them to rush getting this food truck open and then have to stop because there's something they didn't think about or they weren't fully staffed yet. I said, take your time, get all the boxes checked so that when you're open, you're open. I don't want to start and stop situation. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Do you think that she is, and this is a guess on your part, but is she going to be capable of providing a minimum amount of food and drink to the groups that are coming in this summer? Because we talked about them if they have an unfavorable experience, Correct. they may not come back the following year. Is she capable of, based on what you've seen with this food truck? Not offer? out of that. Not out of the truck. I mean, you're not cooking for a hundred people all at once out of that truck. Can they? Can they acquire, you know, offsite catering? That's a different story. Um, these are conversations that it's tough because you know I'm I'm the middle I being the operations. I'm the middleman between these groups and food and beverage. You know, um, in my eight years, as seven years as the head pro there, it would always be, okay, what's uh, what can I get for $25? And I'd have to say, look, this is not my department. You need mm. to talk to, you know. Um, so I hope so. The groups are the big issue. That's the big, <coughs> that's the big issue, is these groups of 100, 120, right. what's going to happen? The deck isn't holding them. But you'll give them advance notice. That I've given absolutely, yeah, so absolutely, yeah. And we've already lost one. They said, "Okay, well, thanks. We're going to go elsewhere." And I, I understand. Yeah. Um, financially, if it's a beautiful day that day, there's a chance we might make even more without them being here. I mean, you, you know, you, you take you, you book these groups because it's guaranteed revenue, but it's not necessarily more revenue than you would do just being open, right? Um, especially on a weekend. Um, you know, so it's not revenue-wise, it's not necessarily a horrible thing. If you lose a group, it's not like we're just going to be closed that day. Yeah. You know, so, but it's nice to have that guarantee. Because mm. a lot of these groups have been coming for double-digit right. years, you know. Um, we'll see. Um, a lot of people are asking questions, and again, I still I don't have answers. And it's really, uh, it's frustrating. It's, um, so a lot of my buddies are saying to me, you must be stressed. I'm saying it's more frustrating than stressful. Well, that because might be a nice question waiting. to Brenda, you know, a what if, and what if we have a group of 100, right. 120, what, what do you think you can do? And so, uh, Gimme's has, um, is opening a location where the Sandwich Bobby Burns was, on oh. Tupper Road, 6A. I knew that. And that's that, yeah. right. So, could that serve as their catering, you know, yeah. and then, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm sure that's what they're thinking, too. You know, it's not far away. We'll see. Um, I, I, I hate coming here and saying, we'll see, I don't know, I don't, but this is where we're at. Yeah. Um, it, it's my, my, my 90 percent of my energy has been put into the immediate, you know, right here and now. Um, 
there will come a time where I need to start thinking about the groups booked in September, you know. Um, any other questions I can dance around? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Um, so, <coughs> any other questions about this? This is uh, an important yeah. topic, I know, for yeah. all of us. It's <coughs> nice to have the, the, the truck there. I mean, it was nice to just see. It's substantial. It looks like something a SWAT team would have. It's, it's, it's legit. I mean, spring of 2024, that sounds reasonable to me. I mean, at this point, a year. Yeah. yeah. That will yeah. be 15 months, 14 yeah. months, something like that. Yeah. Um, it's just frustrating that nothing's. You know, day 94, and I should be seeing studs right now, yeah. you know. So, uh, back to the architect. Did he, Did you come up with a plan for what this new facility yeah. is? Yeah. So, it looked like the, 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 describing it best I can without, a, without an easel, mm. uh, the pro shop's going to be expanded a little. So, I don't know, you've probably never been in the downstairs uh, ladies' room. A ton of wasted space. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Bill. <laughs> Bill, he was looking at you. <laughs> ton of wasted space. It was a locker room at one point, just like the men's room was. Uh, back when it was privately owned, there was a legitimate locker room. So what happened when, uh, where, where the office in the pro shop is, back behind the counter, that door, that was, the, that was men's locker room. When the town bought it, they cut that door in, sectioned off the bathroom, and because they needed storage space and office space. Mm -hmm. The ladies' room, however, was never changed. So it's a ton of open space, wasted space. There's no longer. So basically, the pro shop is going to expand into where the, the men's room is now. Then the bathroom, the bathrooms will be pushed towards towards the other that end of the uh, building. There'll be a little hallway, and where the ladies' room was will now be both the ladies' room and the men's room. I'm not saying. Unisex. I'm saying there'll be, you know, uh, it'll be a little corridor, right? But making use of that space. So basically, everything's kind of shifting that way. So we'll make use of the space by you're going to get a bigger pro shop, upgraded bathrooms. I mean, those bathrooms downstairs are you know, horrible, but, you know. Um, that's really it. No changes upstairs. That, there's one little change that's going to affect us. You probably won't even notice it, but the for the gate on the tenth T side, there's a sliding gate for egress issues. That's going to need to move about eight to ten feet towards the driving range to come in. So we're going to lose some storage space in terms of carts and this and that. Uh, but this way, the door that goes into the snack bar, when you open that, you're not inside the gate. You're outside. That's for you know, some fire safety. So there'll be a snack bar on the by the tent. Yeah, it's, I mean that's again that's up to them if they're going to utilize it. I, I wish they would. Uh, that will be Chris and I have talked about this a lot. That will be a big item when if and when we go to bid when we go to bid whatever it is with the next with a future potential yeah. tenant is we want this utilized people coming off the ninth hole should be going there to grab whatever and go to 10. they yeah. shouldn't be going in the restaurant ideally yeah. going there just to pick up correct yeah and you know because we it's so many times we see the turn times look great kind of coming off nine 202 158 159 and then somebody comes in the pro shop hey there's four groups in the 10th team what's yeah. going on yeah. and it's all people stopping at the restaurant um, well, he did open it when he, he first came, yeah. and he did yeah. renovate it. I will say that for him. Um, why it went away, I don't why, know. Why. <laughs> I, I believe it was because they didn't have enough staff to run both. I think it was strictly okay. a staffing issue. Well, that's a problem. It's a problem everywhere. It's huge. Um, you know. um, hopefully, by now, most of you have met our new operations assistant, Ryan White. I don't know if you met him. Um, he technically replaced Mike Colopy. Great guy, lots of energy, very smart, capable. I think we lucked out getting him on board. We have also hired someone to take the place of David Kassane, who's moved on. Um, his name is Patrick Beer. He starts in the next couple weeks. Um, haven't met him yet, looking forward to it. I say this last, I said this last month and it still rings true. Uh, bear with us, we're doing a lot of training of new staffers uh, and there's a lot more to it than what meets the eye, you know. Uh, leagues, the men's and ladies' league started here at OBF last week. I believe 25 men entered the game this past Wednesday. Question. It, Did an email go out on that? Yes. Through Yes. It did? Yep. I will, I promise. I don't think I got one. Um, I'll look into that, but yeah. I am 97% certain <laughs> <laughs> that it did. 
Okay. Um, and in what was a little more formal type event, 48 ladies played in the Open and Day Scramble Slash Luncheon. Nice. Um, quota started yesterday at Hyannis. Incredibly successful start to what, believe it or not, is the ninth year of this league. I can't believe that. 153 players on, on day one. Wow. Beautiful day. Um, wow. It was perfect. Yeah. Uh, the big winner of the day was longtime member Billy Lemieux. I don't know if you know him. He hold out from a pulled out from 120 yards on the third hole for an eagle, uh, on his way to a payday of six hundred and four dollars. Wow. Day he one. Hold out from, from 120 on, on number three. Number three. And the pin was all the way on the left, just barely over the hump. Oh, I don't know how I mean it. <laughs> Couldn't do that with a thousand balls. Yeah. But he turned fifteen bucks into six oh four. Nice. Um, that's why we have 150. Did you 1099 it? Because it's over, it's over, <laughs> it's over 600. It's shop credit. <laughs> uh, so speaking of money, so revenue through the end of April, we were at uh, close to a half a million dollars ahead of forecasted revenue. Nice. About 460 plus, as I was saying earlier, uh, the um, the interest on our reserves haven't hasn't hit the books yet. So it's really going to be 470 something uh, ahead of forecasted revenue. Obviously, May and June are big numbers to hit, but with less than eight weeks left in the fiscal year, uh, it's, I think it's safe to say we will be making a considerable contribution to our reserves once this year is closed out. We don't typically get that, uh, what we what the, they call the certified free cash from the state until like September, uh, but it's going to be probably close to half a million dollars that we're, we're contributing. Annual pass sales, I did the numbers this, uh, today. They're pretty consistent with last year. Uh, year to date, we're about 97% in terms of total passes sold, so just barely slightly down, and 99% of revenue. As far as non-resident passes go, we're right at that 97% number of, in terms of passes sold, but because of the rate increase, we're actually at 102% of revenue. Um, some total, basically, even with last year, which, I mean, it's, I say the word flat, with it sounds disappointing, but it really, in reality, it means we're on pace to match what was a record year. Mm. So uh, it, that's a good thing. Um, real numbers, uh, last year at this point, 1,021 passes. This year, 990. And that's such a, that's such a small, you know, that could, this coming weekend, we could sell 30 memberships and make that up. Um, lastly, on May 4th, this past Thursday, um, Chris Canella went in front of town council and um, to try to get $50,000 transferred from our salaries and wages into our operating line. And, and so our budget's, <coughs> our budget's essentially broken down into three categories, personnel, operating, and capital. And the funds cannot be used interchangeably between. Um, well, for the second year in a row, staffing shortages were so widespread across the town departments that Finance Director Mark Milne is allowing us to use some of that salary savings uh, for some much needed operating expenses. So we transferred $50,000 for money that was meant for part-time employees that we couldn't find uh, into our operating budget. On the operations side of things, as opposed to maintenance, the only thing addressed was um, a new range ball washing machine here at Old Barnstable, which believe it or not is just under $5,000. Um, all the little things that you really don't think about until you need them. Yeah. And, uh, this is the reason we switched the order. James can talk about what the other $45,000 is being utilized for uh, in his report. When will the mats be placed last out here? Uh, she tries to, I think she does five a year. Um, we have about $5,000. Looks like they do. You think so? All right, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. look. We have about $5,000. stay on the mat. <laughs> oh, God. I five just five grand is our uh, range supply line item. Mats are about three hundred dollars a piece, and we go and an order of range balls. The bare minimum order to get free shipping, it's uh, five hundred dozen. is about thirty five hundred. So pretty much every year, you're getting a new five hundred dozen range balls and five mats is what the budget can ac can accommodate. I can up that number, but I'm cutting somewhere. <laughs> you know, uh, I can definitely we can have all new mats. You know, uh, but I'm cutting five grand from somewhere else. Take it out of maintenance. <laughs> it's always coming out of maintenance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, but, uh, that's what it comes down to. Is that we can we can always have better here. What gets cut? I mean, you all know that. You all, you know. 
We'll find you some memory uh, <coughs> Any other questions for Jesse? We Jesse, have, I, oh, go ahead. No, please. I just wonder, Patrick Beer, where, where did he come from? What's his... Uh... Um, his son was a seasonal here, uh, here at, at Old Barty. Um, I think he worked behind, I'm not sure he worked behind the counter or whatever, but basically, um, when this full-time job came open, um, he jumped on it. But that's how, it, how, how he heard about it, was his son was a, worked for us over mm -hmm. those summers. Um, I, again, I haven't met him yet, um, but Mary said he's, she, Mary and Tom both seem very happy with these Good. two. I mean, it, losing Mike and Dave is, you know, it's big, but, you know, here we go. Everybody, everybody's replaceable. Yeah. Jesse, again, talking about our surplus, uh, which was identical to last year's, uh, I am going to constantly just ask you, as time goes on, about the capital improvement plan in sure. terms of uh, renovating our bunkers right. at both courses. So that would be on schedule, as what you have alluded to at past meetings, yep. right? We will submit that this late fall, early winter. I want to say uh, November? Yeah, November, November, maybe late November is when the CFE gets submitted for FY25. Right. And in that will be, year one will be Greenside Bunkers and Hyannis. Right. Greenside here, back and forth. Yes, we're That's still on, on pace for that. <coughs> I know great. nobody wants to hear FY27. Um, but that's how this needs to work. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, well, if we start with the green side bunkers, yes. well, you know, people are going to be happy. And we're still... And because that, um, that bunker on number 11 is excellent. It really is very good. Oh, you've been so, in the Keith? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 11 on, uh, 11 we, on which we, course? Which course? At the oh, yeah. They took that lip out. I don't oh, know yeah. if you've played it yet. No. Um, I mean, it, it's just a, a so much more yeah. appealing of a hole. We can see um, it. Now, right? yeah, you can, can see, see it. It's not a blind shot. It, it, it's I've just... always thought the defense of that hole is how near, how skinny that green is left to right. You know, you don't need that big lip also. Okay. Yeah, um, but, I mean, the fact is that I know it's a little ways away, but yeah. when we get to improving those bunkers, we're going to really turn the corner Huge. On the quality of that course. And, and James is sick of me saying this, but there's still a lot of bunkers that I want gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I don't, there's the bunkers I don't want to spend money renovating. Right. Saw it. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll wait for James' to report, but we can ask him about um, that. Putting in liners, too, was a huge part. Right, so, yeah. right, right. Okay. Um, well, and, one follow up yeah. question to that. And sure. That is, do you see any impact to the additional changes you want to do? at Hyannis Clubhouse impacting the capital improvement plan? No. Because uh, you're I, spending cash above the correct. insurance claim. Big time. And you're yes. not, we're not going to borrow. It's yes. going to be cash. Uh, that's up to Mark Milne, but we have the cash. Right. Uh, that's up to him. Um, we're spending 800 something thousand on CIP right now out of our 2.3. Mm -hmm. So that'll knock it down to 1.5. After this year's, five, it will be right back up near two. Um, are we going to use half a million of that towards probably? Yeah. Uh, so say we're down to I'm making up numbers, but right. Um, but I believe the bunkers will be financed. Okay. Uh, so which won't be much, uh, you know, on a on a ten year note, it won't be crippling. Um, okay. Yeah. Good. I, I don't see that impeding that. Yeah. Okay. God, I hope not. That's a good question. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. All right, we'll move on to. Uh, oh, please, John. Yeah. Um, I'm a walker, so I don't. What's the status of cards? Are all the cards in? And... None. No. Uh, none. None. Um, we got good news a little bit ago. Was it next week? They're going to be start delivering here, and then the following week will be Hyannis. So by what's today? The ninth. So. So by, by the end of this month, we'll, we should be whole at both courses. As of right now, this course has 40 rentals that Yamaha has provided us at, at no charge, the picker, and some maintenance vehicles. Two? Two. We also have 15, the, the 15 green carts that are here are from Hyannis. We brought 15 over. So Hyannis is down 15, and here they're down about um, 11 or 12 from their usual. So we're, we're operating at about... 
80 to 85 percent of our normal fleet size right now. Um, this weekend it was close, close to running out of carts. Like people were getting their cart 10 minutes before their tea time as opposed to 40 minutes, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's tough. You know, somebody checks in, their tea time's in 40 minutes, they want to grab a cart. Tough for the shop to manage that. So I was told that, uh, what is? 15th is perfect. Correct. So the 15th is what I was told. Only 26 carts fit on a truck, and we have 170 or something coming, so so it'll be like one trip a day. They'll bring, load up ours, take them away. So it'll be like a two-week process to get them all. They're not all showing up together. <laughs> um, so that's what I was told. It's like 26 at a time over probably a two-week period. Um, we'll see. You know, I've learned to... I've become hardened in this position. I've learned to believe it when I see it. Kind of, you know, no matter who it is, no matter what contractor or vendor it is, I, I'll believe it when I see it. <clears throat> All right, Director of Golf Maintenance Report, James. Okay, um, I'll kind of just jump right on um, what we're still thinking about it. That uh, salary and wage transfer um, gave us an opportunity. First of all. Um, I do soil reports every year to look at our levels of um, not just pH, but NP and K, and our pH is starting to slide down below optimum. We haven't limed in several years at either course. That budget line got slashed several years ago. Um, and so uh, both courses are going to get uh, 1,000 pounds to an acre of lime, and uh, roughs, tees, fairways um, give them a good shot to try to um, get our levels back up and it'll actually help release nitrogen that's just stuck in the soil. It needs that pH level to be right to, to release for the plant. So that's huge. That's um, 30 grand? Like uh, it's right around 30 grand. Um, and we're having, uh, that's, it's a, a tremendous amount of product. Um, so we're contracting that out. We can't, we can't handle that. It's 50,000 pounds of lime um, at each course. So right. it's going to take three days to do both courses. Unfortunately, you close the course? no, I'm going to try to do some delays and work around golfers, but they're going to be out there, unfortunately, in June. Um, by the time I got access to actually contract it out with the funds, I'm kind of at their mercy as to when they schedule it. So June 5th, I believe, I'm going to try to get the bulk of Hyannis done. And then not until June 19th and 20th. Um, to finish he wanted to have this done already but ideally it would have happened the money. this week yeah but we literally we didn't have the money to encumber until to they made the transfer so the golfers do not have to stay off the course no the no this doesn't have to be watered in until nighttime um but there is going to be a large tractor out there with a giant hopper um yeah. spreading um he'll do his best to avoid golfers yeah. i'm going to try to do delayed starts at like 8 a.m try to get him ahead but mm. It's a little bit outside of my control. Um, it's just a slow process. It comes in giant 2,000 pound bulk bags. So we're gonna notice it, the greening up of the um, and everything? It's high cal lime. That's why it's important to get it out now. We're not gonna see really an effect from it. It takes a couple of months okay. for it to, to kick in, but hopefully this fall we will. So mm -hmm. the sooner we get it down, the better. May would have been ideal, but that's kind of the cards we were dealt on that one. Um, and then the second thing, um, a big, um, a big thing with, um, our new kind of sustainable approach is trying new products. Um, a lot of it is actually kelp, um, specifically cold processed kelp. For some reason that's better than warm processed, um, for root growth, um, shoot growth. Um, it's all fairly new technology. Um, this particular product is coming from Ireland. Um, they hand pick it off the coast. Um, I'm getting 275 gallon totes, one for each course. It's going to go into our spray rigs and be sprayed out um, often. Um, hopefully to get um, a good plant response. So that's the whole part of this, this program. I just, I have to try new things. Um, and this one sounded pretty good, so I jumped on it. Um, that was 11 to 12 grand for that product. So what's the benefit? Um, a lot of research into it, um, like extending root growth, um, just overall plant health, uh, boosting the plant's defense naturally without 
um, traditional. Um, I mean, we've been spraying kelp products for years. This is just something new. Um, it's gotten pretty good reviews from other people who've tried it. James, do we have any relationship anymore? Uh, John and I walked the course several years back with Dr. Rossi from Cornell University. Uh, we, do we have any sort of relationship with him still? Not as much as we used to. It's funny you mentioned him. Um, I did a webinar um, last week or two weeks ago and someone who works for him was in on it and we kind of talked about how we were doing and how Dr. Rossi helped us initially prepare a program. Um, it was actually a really good conversation. He gave me um, a kind of a cool Excel spreadsheet where I can plug in um, what we use for um, chemicals um, over the course of a year and it tallies up um, kind of, how do I say this, um, environmental, impact. environmental impact of the whole season and then measures it up against other golf courses. I did last year and we're, we're way way below your average golf course. Like I never sort of send you your, here's how you compare to your neighbors. <laughs> right. you know, it puts it into like, like a like chart with a, with a bar graph. So when you say we're below, that means we're below in terms of environmental impact? Oh, way below. Like way below. Any. Way below. Well, yeah. we'd have to be, right, with yeah. our program. Yeah. 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 So it just proves that it's working. I, yeah. It was kind of a, I asked him to send it to me, and I'm glad he did. It was kind of a cool little uh, So then, so. you know, somebody at the town would, would, would be aware of this. I haven't really. I I basically told Jesse about it. I haven't okay. really gone further than that. But um, he sent it to me just to have as. Uh, I don't want to say needed. I don't want to say ammo, but <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that might yeah. be something at the appropriate time. Right. I don't know when yeah, that correct. would be. Here's hard data to let that shows the people the in reduction the town. in yeah. impact. Right. right. To let the people of the town know what we're doing. And Absolutely. I'm going to continue as you know we continue this program every year. I'm just going to keep it on file and show what we're doing. Great, that's great. So that was kind of a bonus. Um, glad you brought that up. Yeah, okay. I kind of forgot all about that already. Um, moving on, uh, <laughs> the greens aeration of both courses was completed. I think it went really well. Um, a lot of sand went out, which was good. They needed it. They took kind of a beating this, week, uh, this winter. Um, <coughs> old Barney, I mean, I don't know if you guys have been out there, but uh, they're nearly healed up. Um, we're going to be dropping the height of cut, I believe, tomorrow to an eighth of an inch, um, which will be our height for the season. So that's good. Hyannis, you know, a week later, a little bit further behind. Um, their greens are a little bit thinner, so hopefully I can drop the height there soon. But uh, we got to get them to kick in a little bit. Um, the warm weather will, will help. But overall, I thought that went uh, really well. Um, and of course, um, the loaming and seeding of the car pass at Hyannis. After we aerated Hyannis, both crews, both maintenance staffs went over and they attacked it. I'd say maybe they're 80 percent done um, with loaming and seeding. We uh, we actually waited to seed because we had a pretty good we saw a weather event coming. And, mm. uh, we did have a few washouts, but hopefully now we can get it to catch before that happens again. So, um, but we bear with us. We're still. I know it's you know, there's still stump holes out there. There's there's still a lot to do at Hyannis, but we did get a, a good chunk of it done. We felt good about that. Um, even without the seed coming up, just having those sides loaned, I think, pressed up the project pretty nice. Yeah. I think the um, fairways look great over there. And the fairways yeah. have kicked back in, yep. Yeah. Well, I've said to both of you gentlemen that uh, number eight, and I'm just saying this really for the benefit of the public, number eight looks like a great hole. And again, three or four or five years ago, we had the bunker right in the middle of that right. fairway, which was terribly unfair. We had all those trees uh, that made it a very, very difficult hole. And of course, you had the cart path, which was non-existent. Now, a beautiful fairway. The trees have been cut back. The cart path goes all the way. And once that grass comes in on either side, it's going to be a great hole. It's going to be nice. We even got the power company to slightly move up <laughs> one of the wires. Yeah, that's so, it. <laughs> not as much as we wanted it, but um, so that was nice getting that project done. A big thank you to the uh, the both crews. They did a they did a, I mean they just attacked it and they got it almost done. So hopefully we can finish that up this week. Um, Coming up, wall-to-wall uh, -wall fertilization, the end of May. I don't know if we touched on that at the last meeting, probably not. 
Um, it's an organic product, um, army, army listed. It's going to stink. <laughs> um, 523 Tuesday at Hyannis, um, and the following day, Wednesday, at Old Barney. Um, we're doing that in-house with our, our spreaders. Um, so that'll be good to kick our turf in. Don't wear your nice shoes that day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, other than that, just a uh, little Audubon update. Um, pretty soon here, I'm going to start submitting um, like the first steps in the process towards getting certified. Um, it's the more I've gotten into it, it is going to be a little bit of a process. They look at everything, um, chemical use reduction, wildlife, habitat management, um, you know, water conservation. And I have to do a little check the box thing on what we specifically do in each of those categories and kind of submit that to them. But I am going to start getting them their info. Um, and also, as uh, I think we did talk about maybe forming some sort of group, I'm still kind of in the process of putting that together, but um, I feel like the next time we do a project or something to do with habitat or wildlife, I might send out an email and see if there's any interest in someone coming to help out. Um, I want to keep it casual. I don't want to make anything too formal. But hey, we're doing this today, maybe you know, planting wildflowers or cleaning the bird boxes out or something like that, just to get the even members or even people out in the community involved. That's um, a great idea. That's a some, great something idea. along those yeah. lines. Like in the fall, we're going to be planting more milkweed. Maybe in the newsletter, the town newsletter that comes out every Friday. Sure. That's I perfect. Can send something to Lynn, just yeah. say, hey, the golf course is going to be doing this. I need to start. My, uh, Chris Canella, my boy, he's, uh, he's on me to start making sure I Throw, yeah, so golf have, I don't. Yeah, because yeah. golf hasn't had much of a presence in that, and that's. Uh, I'll take. I'll take the heat for that. Yeah, I mean, I got so my shellfish go, plant. Please do. Well, yeah, to put I that. That. I got my you know, um, <laughs> Bill and I are both uh, co-hoggers, <laughs> and we volunteer with the natural resource. And there is a dedicated cadre of people who volunteer to plant cohogs and do all sorts of things. And I ab absolutely believe that. As time went on, you could build up a really good group. Sure, and it's not going to be anything backbreaking no, work or anything, no. but just to educate people and show them this Strictly is the kind volunteer. of stuff we're doing out here. So it seems like you, the town, has a process in place where you have an account with them, where you can get your beach sticker, you can get your shellfish permit, and that's mm -hmm. what I was, you know, trying to point out last time about the golf membership. Maybe something like that could be incorporated somehow because you have to upload. Information. You do. And it, it, we, you could even use the information the, already that they already have. I think you know? the driving force may have been to reduce the credit card fees. That's, I mean, we got I know you this did, year yeah. 90 grand something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, huge. For um, pass holders. That, um, yeah. Um, it, they only started allowing credit cards shortly before I started here. It, 10 or 12 years ago, you had to pay by check. Really? I think Dennis. I want to say Dennis is check only, cash or check only. Uh, and it's probably for that reason. Yeah. Um, well, on the town website, if you want to pay by credit card, you pay a premium. With an excise bill, bill yeah. or whatever. It's like it a, another dollar, two dollars, something yeah. like that. And for the convenience, people are willing to do that. Sure. You know. And that's for right. Yeah. Yeah, to get your shellfish license if you don't pay. Yeah. But is the town getting that or is that a third that's the third software party. that's the third party that's the right. third party yeah okay um hey that'd be fine by us that would save us plenty because we're just absorbing it right now well chris should be able to help you out with that i mean he's in charge of yeah. the beach program, right right so that'll be a big conversation come uh september once we start talking about early sign up program yeah um I'm trying to think of how networking with, like, like you said, the the information they already have, which is we utilize the town website for property lookup. If somebody comes in, oh, did you, you know, is your name on your house? Yes, look it up. Okay, that's that's proof right there. Um, so many times it isn't. You know, they come in. Are you are you, you know, are you do you own property in Barnstable? Yes, I do. What's the name? And you look it up. Your name's not on that. Oh well, it's in my uncle's name. <laughs> okay, so let's start over. Yeah. Um, You're not a resident. It's but it's just something to look into, Jesse. You don't have yeah. to have all the answers right now. And the newsletter is a great way to communicate with people in the town. 
anything that takes yeah. the heat off the staff of especially this time of year i mean it's pretty much that the rush is over now but you get that first nice weekend in april and it's just a lot you see it's a line out the door of everybody with their application in their hand that's not fun for anybody no you know um so i yeah I, I, i'm definitely going to look into that and that's not it's not lip service i promise so, you know. okay uh, do we have questions of James? Bunker on 18. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. The, the, the bunker's in the left on 18. Bunker's on 18. Left of the... Filled in. Yes. Is Here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is it going to be filled in? Yes. Or? Yeah. Somebody uh, doing work on those already. Right? Yeah. The, actually, one of them's already gotten quite a bit of fill. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And when the new cots show up, um, have you thought about putting seed bottles on there for people to fill divots? Because I, I played with somebody this past weekend and... You know, like number three fairway here, you know, before the, right in front of the pond. And, and I know you have someone that goes around and periodically fills divots, but it's, you know, you can't, it's a huge undertaking. I don't understand why the golfers can't fill divots. I'll never understand. But. Uh, we got away from that, we got away from that and divot boxes. We found we were wasting too much seed. They're germinating um, in the bottles. They germinate in the box after two days, three days, because moisture gets in there, and then it's junk. Um, so we were dumping most of it in the woods, and with the cost of seed being four to five dollars a pound. How do how do they do it? Everywhere else, <laughs> you know. Well, it speaks it. it speaks to when we, the player is not using it, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. That's do you make maybe them aware a, of it's somehow? on us from an yeah. educational standpoint, or yeah. Um, At Hyannis Court, they have a guy in the morning goes out and fills in all the. Right. Like, will he come over here? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, when we Do did we have different boxes I mean, on the tees here, a lot of times on the weekends when I move tee markers, I try to shovel some of it out as I was going to try to get it out there. But it just, yeah, we were wasting a lot of seed. Um, I don't know. Just Get I'll Steve to put a little bucket on his push cart. He'll <laughs> fill it every morning. And then it's also it could be, a, I mean, who's... Who's taking the time to fill those up every day? Do you have the staff and operations? Are you looking at me? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we can't do it. Uh, but you're talking about the seed bottles on the on, on the, the carts. carts. Yeah. yeah. Which I would have had to order already. Um, not to say they maybe couldn't come out and, and do that. Um, It would be it would be logistically something we'd have to figure out because you're talking about maintenance, making up the sand seed mix for them yeah. all the time. Yeah, I'm not saying it can't be done. That would almost have to be a decision package for next year to, to for the cost of the additional seed and sand and the bottles themselves and the installation of the cart. I mean, the carts we're getting we're getting 170 some carts without they you know they bolt the holster on there and that's I mean that's thousands of dollars just for that. Um, let me look at the price. Let me look at pricing, um, and to see if they can I, do it aftermarket. I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's great to have you know, people fill their own divots. Well, of course, but yeah. sure. And yeah. you get the word out too. Educating people is tough. I, I a phrase I I'm going to be using a lot now with the loan at Hyannis is keep keep all four tires on the cart path. Mm. It drives me crazy. I see these people they drive, whether it's the, the T they're stopping at or the green. Everybody just feels the need to get those two wheels. And I don't understand it. Why do you need to get 18 inches closer? I think we're uh, going to have to put up a fence on 14 and 6 over there for that reason. Yeah, for, yeah. 14, 14 is it's green way too close to the green to be. Or we're never going to have grass there. Yeah, you take two steps and you're on the green. That's, yeah. And that's fine if that's the case. Um, you do fencing and not ropes. Uh, you make yeah. it permanent. Yeah. Just weed I just I hate the look of that uh, rope. Yeah. That's. Yeah. If that if that's the case, that's the case. Um, do you want to mention those tees? Is it too early? We can. Right. I mean, uh, I kind of priced it out. So as far as getting quotes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, several about nineteen thousand square feet worth of tee space at Hyannis. Some of those tees that are in really bad shape, we're just going to strip and resod. Um, we found some money to do that. Um, be huge um, instead of just trying to seed and get them to kick in um, some of them are just down to dirt seven seven 15, 15, 15. <laughs> um, yeah. 12 the back the further back tees the sh we are we need to do some serious tree work back there but oh, yeah. um, those are garbage so 10, 10, 10, 10 white tee 10, and then 10 11 here and 11 11 blue tee here the surround and the tee 
that just gets no light. Are you doing the canopy cutbacks? I wouldn't the... know about blue tees. <laughs> uh, on 11, we have to be careful. That's wetland. That might involve conservation before we can attack. So if the branches all died at the same distance, it would be obvious. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and the backside of 7, too, that hiatus, right? Um, That's water department land, I believe. We The last time we did that, we talked to them. They were okay with it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't oh. wetland, but they do own that sector. They actually own some of the tea box. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. right. Really? Seven, yeah. right. Yeah. You look at that's the why I thought we haven't been damage. able to renovate that. They'd be okay with that, I think. I was When we did tree work to seven, we actually yeah. talked yeah. a couple of years ago. We talked to them before we did anything, and they gave us the okay. Um, cut down some trees around the tea box. It doesn't look like it, but we did take down some trees. A hundred. Right. Around that tea so, box. Yeah. Around the tea box and, the <coughs> and behind six green. And and the, seven, that and hole was a tunnel. And eight, you know, and now it's and going eight, up eight. eight. Yeah. yeah. But seven was like, mm. you know, like a second hole of cloche that you guys know. That was right. like, it's, yeah. We're also going to have that contracted out because we, uh, it's actually not that expensive and we can't handle that right now. You just strip, you strip it. We'll strip it. They come it. in, they, they lay, it, lay it out for us. It's only a couple cents more a square foot for them to come in and do it. So. Going back to the bunker question, are you taking out that first bunker on number two at high end? The, the bunker near the green, when I say uh, the first bunker, up by the green. Both there are, both I would like them all gone. Yeah. All four of them. All four. That, well, that's I me. Saw I, one he needs to tell me why, why I'm wrong or that's not <coughs> possible. Why would you take those out? Uh, what do they offer? Uh, keeps people from ricocheting into the woods. They're catcher's mitts. Well, they could still be shaped that way. I'm not saying level grass bunker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. not saying no, because I know what you mean. You hit it right now; it's down. No, no, no. Yeah, if you're hit, because most people are coming in from 180 plus. Correct. And you hit yeah. the face of that thing, you don't have a bunker, right. and it's gone. No, I would argue to grass bunker. Correct. So you can turn it into swales and catchers. Yes, but it, don't would, say it wouldn't be graded. Okay, it fine. Yeah, you would know there was a bunker there. It would yeah. be obvious. I thought you were just going to make the hillside that hole, and that hole is tough enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, he knows there's a million bunkers I want gone. It's only two bunkers in Hyannis that I care about. But Take out the one on the front of 10. ten. You care about the front of 10. Take that one out. That's, that protects the whole, and the fairway bunker on five, I think, is a really good yeah. bunker. That need oh, I hate that. Bunkers, I hate that bunker. Of course you do, because that means it's in the right don't spot. Don't you go over that? I Most of the time, but when you don't. Right. But if you don't. <laughs> it's now a wedge out. You're up again. Now you're wedged out, now you got 220 in. Yeah, yeah. I hate that bunker. It's a perfect bunker. That and the one on tap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions for James? We one, good? Well, um, last month we mentioned, and I think we talked about it before, with the blended teams. And, yeah. And I know the only thing that had to be done is the scorecards. Yep. You said, you know, so I just want to kind of, I don't know how often you order new scorecards, but is that something that you think could happen? Yes. I with, talked to Vinny. Uh, okay. We, we, we had some emails back and forth. Right. He actually came came to the office, and um, we uh, we ran through some. What would it be? You know, because uh, again, we talked about having that. Or? No, more so just here. We already yeah. did it at Hyannis. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah you know, the hybrids are at Hyannis. Yeah, and so Hyannis is a good. Uh, you know, sixty three hundred six thousand. It's it's a good because again we talked about symmetrical yeah gaps. Um, here, I think uh, the blues and whites. I'm not so sure needs it because it's really only a 300 yard gap um but the the whites and golds for sure um mary still has at least half a year's worth of scorecards uh order scorecards pretty much once a year you get about twenty thousand of them um i'd like to see a blue white if i put the right get it yeah Sorry. i mean, we can do it. it yeah, again, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. Right, and it. It, you could advertise the course as, you know, six sets of cheese. So, the know. blue, so what's the, the, the blues here are almost 64, right, I want to say. And the whites, now, that's a whole other conversation about the whites being where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, Keith has a scorecard here. I, I, uh, blues now are almost 65. Really? 65? 64.79. And what are the whites? 61.13. Okay, so you know what, I think it's, exactly. that's a big enough. Yeah, so if we could get a, uh, if we could get a 60, 62 and change, 63. Yeah, um, yeah I'll sit, uh, I want to sit down with Vinny. The one thing I want to avoid, and I think I said this last month, is having a lot of holes with the same exact yardage. Because if you shrink, then, if then you, you short, you don't have to play. I mean, you don't have to play right, it that way. Right, right. You know. 
um, it might be unavoidable. You know, if you're lengthening the short holes and shortening the long holes, you got a bunch of holes that are all 360. You know, <laughs> and, um, so what you need then is a white gold combo sure. to have the course at the distance that the whites are right now. Right, because and I was having a conversation with Mary about. Well, on nine, I don't think the whites should be that far back because a lot of people wouldn't even be able to reach a fairway. And, and she, her rebuttal to that, and I think she's 100% right, is those people should be playing the golds. You know, if you can't keep the ball in the air for 180 yards, you should be playing the golds. Um, pride is a powerful thing. A lot of people don't want to move up until they do and they realize it's great. You know, uh, my father was like that. Want to play the blues, get your money's worth. Cool. Now he moves up and plays the whites, and he says, whoa, this is way more fun. I have birdie putts. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think maybe if the whites were to go back to where they're supposed to be on holes like 9 and 11, like we discussed, yeah. maybe that would indirectly, I don't want to use the word force, but it would indirectly get more people moving up um, you know, to at least play the hybrid. Because obviously a hole like 9 would be a hole where we're using golds on the hybrid. You know, 7, 5, we all know, you know the toughest holes. Um, and then on holes like six or whatever, you leave them back on the whites, you know, shorter ones. So to get the whites back up over 6,000. Correct. You would move some of those markers back to back. the blues. Yes. So the yeah, ridge the blue. to where the, where the MGA marker yeah. really is. Okay. Because we don't want white <coughs> tees. We don't want our second set of tees to be under 6,000. Yeah, right. I think that's um, be great. It, it, yeah. yeah. Um, so then if you want to, yeah, if you want to play that 5,700 yards, which is a perfect yardage for a lot of people, you play the white gold. Yeah. What, what are the golds? The yeah. hybrids. Uh, the goals, <coughs> 54. Perfect. So if we got a 57, yeah. white, you know, um, five iron distance times 36. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. That's kind of a good barometer. Um, you know, me, I hit my five iron about 175 yards. 175 times 36, 6,300. Hmm. That's about right for me. That's kind of what I, where I'm comfortable at. Anything, once I start getting 64 and above, eh, I'm not so comfortable, you know? Um, but yeah, take your five iron yardage, multiply it by 36, and that's about, it's a, it's an interesting. Take the five iron, I think I hit. It's an, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting, you know, Jason's probably 6,600. I'm, I'm 175, 180, I'm right there with you. Okay, so what, yeah. yeah, so 180 would be a 64. 64, so. 65 is my number. Yeah. If I start playing 7,000 yards, it's a long Right, day. if I play, I play in a Cape Cod PGA tournament or a New England PGA tournament, I see 6,700. I know I'm not. It's gonna, a long day. I'm not going to have a fun time. <laughs> like you know, I just. Well, everything's a two twenty yeah. approach. Yeah, I mean, I might. Yeah, but just an interesting. <laughs> I uh, could even put that on the back of the scorecard, maybe. You know, general guide as to which group to play. Yeah. Yeah. Take your fight. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't even don't hit five irons anymore. Whatever. Five mm -hmm. irons. Whatever. <laughs> I forgot to mention too, uh, as part of that T starting, uh, the long promise forward T on five is part of that. High ends. At high ends. No. The car path. Uh, up on the left side? Yeah, the yeah. car path project kind of got in the way of that. That was their little. Yeah. That red and gold T on five right now is just garbage. It's, it's got to go. Yeah. Just let it grow in and ignore yeah. it. And then maybe. maybe Is that, is that a par four 12. from there? Uh, no, it would, it would be short. It would only be like 430, yeah. something like that. But it would be, um, it's funny, when I was telling some of, the, some of the ladies about it who play there, where, where the tee was going to go, they said, because a lot of them will hit it over the bunker now, one of them said, uh, so Jackie Duffy, you know, she were, she's a very strong player, one of them said, oh, well, someone like Jackie's going to be able to get on in two. <laughs> I said, well, so what? Yeah. <laughs> so what? I mean, the 16th hole at Hyannis, you know, some guys can drive it. Should we change it? No. Weren't they like four and six feet for Eagle in the club championship? Justin Beers and Joe Hunt. The ball marks were both within 10 feet of the hole. Oh, wow. From the Blues on 16. Neither yeah, like, one of them hit driver, by the way. <laughs> really? They both hit three. Ridiculous. Yeah. So we, do we change the hole? No. That's fine. No, but if you miss, you're done. <laughs> Correct. You can further back. So that's <laughs> right. Where you put, yeah, put it where the, yeah. Put it where the uh, uh, Pepsi shed so, is. And, 12, and I want to talk to James about 12. Uh, you're only 12. You love 12. I know, I know. Well, 12 is my favorite hole in high end, so. I, <laughs> 
Okay. It's All right. <coughs> Any other comments? James, we're good? We're good. Okay, Jesse. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. June 14th is the next meeting. Oh, okay.